election. How do you continue to keep the election system safe in times of rising threats? My guest tonight, Pinkas Shah, he's the chief product officer for the cybersecurity firm Qualys. I'll play with me tonight here on The Final Five, all the way in from the West Coast. Good to Good see you. To, Thanks absolutely. for coming in tonight. Pleasure, pleasure to be here. Uh, it's amazing that we, I mean, technology has evolved so quickly, and 2020 was unlike any election we saw because we relied so much more on 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 the internet, on, on electronic means to count the votes and to get people to vote here. But even from 2020 to 2024, the landscape has changed dramatically. It certainly has. And, you know, cyber risk has become almost business risk, right, for organizations. But especially for the election year, this is like, like the most heightened times. We see a lot of the activities in dark web. Um, and it's not just about the election gears that was the concern for many years ago, right? You know, the encryptions have gotten much better. Uh, it's the before and after of what happens in a typical sensitive mission-critical decision-making time like the election year that I think cybersecurity becomes on the forefront uh, of many other concerns. It's almost like a national security concern. It really is. And when you look at where uh, we have been, where we've evolved, and, and our government systems still seem so antiquated in so many ways, shapes, and forms, so you need to have people proactive on that front to make sure you're addressing, uh, addressing these risks before they even get on your radar. Yeah. No, they, they certainly are. And I think, you know, if you look at the recent report um, that Verizon had, uh, almost uh, one out of third breach that has happened in this world has been around ransomware. And then now if you look at ransomware, which is a very large yeah. uh, threat that we see uh, around the world, eight out of 10, Jim, eight out of 10 ransomware attacks were actually happening because of a known vulnerability that was already known and had a fix for it. Hmm. And so on one hand, we're kind of looking at the attack vector exploding from you know, your endpoints to cloud security, from your operating, you know, the OT and the IoT devices uh, to your applications, we're still seeing a lot of people not doing the basic hygiene thing. Eight out of 10 of those top ransomware attacks were exploiting a vulnerability that was already existing, right? So to me, we talk about AI, and yes, we want to put a very fancy smoke alarm system in the house, but there's a broken window to fix first. And to me, I think that there are a lot of organizations are still struggling uh, with the basics. Uh, so from, from your perspective as somebody who's very smart and very well versed in this sort of thing, and people like us and maybe the people watching who, who, who are not, we just know that we have to uh, change our passwords every couple of months and we have to make sure we don't fall, uh, fall victim to, uh, to phishing uh, attacks or spear phishing attempts and, or whatever the latest uh, easy trend is. This is something that, that everybody has some skin in the game on. Everybody uh, in, in an organization, whether it be a private company or whether it be government agencies, really need to practice what you said, call that, that hygiene. Yeah, we absolutely feel um, that's a first order problem that I think we need to solve. In fact, tomorrow, the reason uh, what brings me to, to DC, other than having the pleasure to, to meet you in the <laughs> awesome weather, um, is we have a uh, cyber risk public sector conference that Qualys is hosting tomorrow. And we're bringing the best minds in the world, uh, primarily from the federal side. Uh, we have Department of Labor, Department of Energy, uh, Chief Information Security Officers from many of these companies. Uh, and, and it's a completely one day free conference for all cybersecurity professionals as part of this public-private partnership mm -hmm. that we want to strengthen to exactly do what you said, to bring the awareness and the best practices on how we leverage AI to kind of fight the AI, right? And on the other hand, <laughs> as the adversaries and the attack vectors right. continuously grows. Do we, do we fear, I mean, when it comes to AI in all shapes and forms, are, do you think that the, that the way that the media is reporting it, is it... Is it are we doing it from an educated way? Are we, are we taking too much of the scare tactics? I mean, is it something that people should be fearful of, or is it something that, that we need to learn much more about? Sometimes fear is a good motivation um, to do the right things. But I think there's a lot of um, buzz around kind of the gen AI mm -hmm. um, on the consumer side. But I think there's equal amount of AI that is getting deployed now by the attackers and the adversaries. And I think what has changed over the last few years, Jim, it's the simplicity, the accessibility with which AI is now available on the, the other side for the attackers, right? And cybersecurity for us at Qualys, we've been using AI to defend and help our organizations defend the, their cybersecurity posture for 19 years now. So that's not new. Yeah. I think what's new is the, the ease of accessibility. Uh, and so now the precision of the attacks and the speed with which the attackers are attacking is becoming a concern. So it is real, for sure. So when you look, last, last question, when you look at our election system right now, what is the, uh, what's the for, for any election officials that might be paying attention to these conversations, what's the number one order of business they should address? I think, uh, you know, making sure that the cybersecurity posture and the hygiene uh, is well maintained, yeah. I think is very important. 
Uh, if you look at the before and the after part of the election, there's a lot of deep fake uh, oh, happening, yeah. right? You know, while while um, uh, the campaigns will continue to go, it's kind of hard to know which which of these media is kind of real or, or fake. Yeah. And so, uh, how do you not let the wrong influence kind of go out to, you know, to such an important decision? A denial of service, another very important attack. Uh, ransomware is another type, but but how do you make these systems almost inaccessible? Uh, you know, is another way of attacking. And so, I, I would say those are the two more important things uh, to look at. Well, that underscores why you need you need serious and robust investments in those sort of systems no matter whether it's public or private or, or whatever. Uh, Pinkesh, great to meet you. Thanks for coming in tonight. Absolutely. Really appreciate you. that. Good luck. Enjoy your time here in D.C. Thank you. Final Five is back after this. Come and pass the